The country is the United States of America. The year, 1860. The country is plagued by racism, slavery, hate, indifference, intolerance. Now, they find themselves on the brink of an epic civil war. Will the Union North listen to the Confederate South and obey their wishes? Will the Confederate South agree upon anything with the Union North? That is unknown. Can these two sides, who are slowly becoming mortal enemies, reconcile and become the great nation they look to promise to be? It all started in 1776 with the Founding Fathers who just wanted a free country with no dictatorship or a king. And now the poor, agricultural, slave-inducing South finds itself at a disagreement with the richer, better supplied, heavily populated city urban industry north. The South finds itself at a difference with them because of slavery. And not only because of slavery, but because of the differences between their economies. Alright guys, it's Glader here, and we're going to do our first ever Empire Total War campaign. It's going to be a Civil War campaign. And I am going to play as the South, since I am from Georgia, and I just love military, from the military standpoint, I loved the South, uh, it's crazy what they were able to do. Um, I don't agree with a lot of their policies, such as slavery and such, so forth, but military-wise speaking, for the most part, uh, I thought they were pretty cool, so that's who we're going to play as, plus it's more fun when the side who doesn't win, or who isn't supposed to win and who didn't win, can win uh, as sort of an alternate history type thing. But yeah, we're going to play as the South. We're going to put it on hard and hard. Um, I'm still fairly new to this. Not the managing stuff, the battle stuff. I guess we could do campaign difficult. Well, you know what? I've never played this mod like that before, or on the campaign map. So I don't know. We're going to do short campaign, long campaign. We're going to do short campaign. Yeah, short campaign. And... No, 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 and everything's good. So let's start and let's set the mood. But yeah, guys, so just trying to set the scene, the mood there. I'll put some dramatic music behind it, hopefully, and uh, we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to make this a pretty short episode. Uh, we're probably not going to see a battle. Most episodes will have a battle, but the first one or two episodes are usually kind of slower, uh, involve building and stuff, but you also don't want to skip that out necessarily, so we're going to do it quickly. So like I said, I'm not even going to build troops this episode. I don't expect anyone to declare war on us. First thing we need to do is see if we can get trade with anyone, even the Union North who hates us, and they said no. So usually you have to pay people to get a, a trade agreement with them, even though it helps both sides. They want a military alliance, 35,000. Um, how about we do this? Let's do something that's really still not even fair, but I'll accept it. Uh, we'll go five grand, because we'll make several thousand a turn off this. Give region Louisiana. Uh, we'll counter offer. How about I give you... I could give up Florida and storm it later. Uh, I'm not desperate yet. We'll say 7,000 since you seem to be willing to wheel and deal here. Okay, you know what? Go screw yourself. No one likes you France freaking morons. Just someone take my trade agreement. 22,000? What? Give you like 6,000. That's a good deal. We're going to make like the same amount of money off of this, and I'm giving you an extra 60000 at the start. And you want Florida. You can go to hell, sir. Mexico, I kind of want to invade you, because in real life, the Confederacy did want to go for Mexico, or at least the, the thought was there, so I believe I heard uh, Puerto Rico was thrown around. Uh, you can just go to hell already. I'm not paying forty five grand. Oh, you don't even want to wheel and deal? No counteroffer? 
Military access for 20 turns. Do it! Okay, well, I'm gonna kill all of you if you don't take my trade deals. Like, if you're not doing me any good, you gotta go. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Okay. Did I just put 10,000 or 100? I put 100 that. No, I did have 10,000. Glader is tripping after work. Oh, I'm demanding that. No, no, no. I'm, I'm being nice and I'm offering it, you jerks. Oh my god, why do you ask for so much? Just ask for a trade agreement. Okay, so this is one of the things about Empire's War that does piss me off, is it is impossible to get a trade deal, and it is not fair when you do. You have to pay on an arm and a leg, even though both sides, both sides will profit like five grand a turn off the trade. So instead of just doing that, even with nations that are friendly to us, you have to pay them like ten grand up front. So you lose ten grand, and then you guys make the same every turn, or roughly the same. And now they want regions, they want me to give up like some of the states. Technically, I'm not even separated from the United States of America at this point. So we're just going to build a ton of stuff that is fully built, farms, uh, we don't need this col- no, burn it, idiot. Uh, colleges are usually for research of technologies, however you cannot research technologies in this mod, at least this is version 3.4, It is. I know it is very stable and I do not have the warpath, uh, the Warpath DLC for Empire Total War, so I can't play the latter versions of this mod anyway. It's required to play the latter versions. So now we have a choice. Small tobacco plantation, small cotton plantation. So we're going to go in. We're going to go to trade. We're going to see which one's worth more. 15. Cotton is worth 15 gold per bale. Where's the tobacco? And the tobacco is worth 14, so we'll go cotton. Because they were, we produced a ton of both of those things. Neither one is terrible. They're about the same. Coffee. Uh, who wants coffee? Technically, the northerners brew way more coffee. I mean, in the Civil War, the southerners were always trying to get coffee from the northerners. They never had any. Then they would swap real coffee for real tobacco. Alright, we'll build a tobacco plantation there. Tobacco. I don't know why I'm, t I'm talking like I'm in the time. That's for sure. We're just building. We go cotton again in Florida there. That's where I'm, I'm, that's basically where I'm from, guys. I'm from Tallahassee, Florida, which is about right in between these two towns. Because this is St. Mark's. I live about 20, 30 miles from St. Mark's, but I'm right here, right on the edge of these trees. Osceola. There's about, I think it's supposed to be like roughly like Lake City over here. Because this is St. Augustine, right? Yeah, so Jacksonville's right. So this is roughly ish. There's a battle here, the biggest battle in the history of Florida, on Florida soil. I believe it was. It was pretty big. Ooh, we don't need military governor's barracks there. Um, we should probably actually build those in... Oh yeah, we're definitely going to want those in our key states. So our key states, I did, I've did. i seen a lot of people play through this, and I did play through a few turns, not much. And in those few turns, what I've seen is... Between Washington, D.C. and Richmond are going to be a ton of battles, which was the eastern theater of the Civil War in real life. Between those two capitals were all of the big battles between Robert Lee and Grant and Meade, McClellan, Burnside, all those guys took place over there mainly and the occasional foray up to Maryland and Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, we're going to want to build infrastructure as well. So, and then we have this valley over here, this Kentucky, West Virginia valley, the other side of like what I think is the Shenandoah. Shenandoah's over here. I'm not sure what this valley is called. But, they're going to be coming down it from Detroit, Buffalo, and they'll send troops from Pittsburgh and such and Philadelphia all the way down through this alley and they'll funnel them in. So Nashville, Tennessee, and Kentucky is going to be a huge theater, as is Richmond, Virginia. The Carolinas might see a little bit of action. And then we're going to press up. They usually don't press up too hard, it seems, the Union. We're going to press up from Louisiana and Texas and eventually hit St. Louis and probably see if we can push up and take Nebraska. It's usually not even worth it. But uh, we might. So our, our, basically we're going to have two theaters here. And then we might even see if we can get a small army down here and foray into Mexico because this is a huge money producer. Take Mexico City. As I said earlier, this, the South was actually interested in taking some of the Mexican territory and annexing it. Uh, 
New Orleans. We're going to want to build infrastructure down here as well as <clears throat> as well as more barracks for better troops. Uh, did we build infrastructure in Richmond, guys? I don't remember off the top of my head. No, nor can we. Good to know. So I'm probably just going to leave it at that and the turn. It has this nice little guitar strum. They have a bunch of technologies that I wish we had, and they want to give me money for Tennessee and the Carolinas, to which I will say, Abraham Lincoln, you can go to hell, sir. Although I do respect you in real life, but in this game I can't. So we have the American Civil War Chronicles. Each turn we have this, and it gives us a cool cool little neat facts. Uh, this is the American Civil War. 61 to 65 was a bitter sectional rebellion. This is actually a really small text for me to read. Between the United States of America and the Confederate States of America, formed of 11 southern states governments, which moved to secede from the Union, blah, blah, blah. You can read this if you want. I'll scroll down. You can pause it and read it. We wouldn't have time to do this all. Okay, so there you go. It is January of 1861, and we have half of our money is now gone. Very interesting. We definitely want to build infrastructure in Virginia so we can move troops. Although the barracks are going to be really important in this area. Build infrastructure up there. Are we building infrastructure? We need infrastructure there. We need infrastructure to move troops. If, uh, that's better roads. And you, in the Empire Total War, it's roads. But here it's trains. It is like the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. We can build some troops. However, we don't want to do that yet. We will get some Confederate militia. Maybe we should hit Kentucky first. Historically, the South does start the Civil War at Fort Sumter, so... I'm going to build troop barracks up there. I'm going to burn this. Because I'm not trading with anyone, so I don't know where this trade is going. Oh, I messed up. Oh, okay. I didn't know you could do that. That's interesting. None of those three, out of those four buildings, only one does anything, so... kind of just have to build craft workshops. Again, we're just building our economy up so that we'll have more money in the long run. Because if we start building troops, they get really expensive really fast. And, yeah, it, it gets <laughs> really expensive. We have no infrastructure out here. We are running out of money. How much are we getting off this trade line? 195. We're going to burn this. It's not even worth it. We're going to build a fishing port. That'll generate us some income. We'll get troops out there. Build some infrastructure. And that's probably going to be it for this turn, guys. Oh, Union has built some troops. They are moving. They are preparing for war. Oh, come on, guys. We can't work this out. I'll give you permanent military access. Offer you payments of 1400 repeatedly over the next eight turns. That's such a fair deal. Just take it. Oh, come on. You didn't take that? You better hope you don't get... I can't reach you if you're just on the islands. There's no navy or ships in this game, guys. Here, you can read this if you want. Okay, it is February of 1861A, so it's the first two weeks of February. And we are still... We could be in trouble because I'm, I'm taking a risk here. And I'm not building any troops, and they have realized the importance of Kentucky. They have Union Militia. We have Confederate Militia. We're building a ton of troops there, even though we really can't afford it. We're going to have to start building troops in Virginia. Robert E. Lee is all we can afford, but he's super important. Is there anything else we can build? Yes. And, really quickly, I do something that I think is pretty neat, but you guys probably think it's stupid, but you'll see. So if you right-click on a unit, you can change their name. So this is, they're from Tennessee, so they're going to be the first Tennessee Militia. I give them names so that when you're in the battle, you know who you're 
it's not just 1st Regiment of Foot, 2nd Regiment of Foot, 84th Regiment of Foot. The Union will have that, you'll see. I feel like it's a lot more personal and fun this way and more realistic. So yeah, we got the 1st 2nd Tennessee Militia over here. Militia is not a very good unit. Let's keep on keeping on. We're going to our third turn. This is probably going to be the last turn. And so the Civil War has begun. We neither side has any allies. Doesn't matter if I click. Their power is terrifying. Wealth spectacular. Our power. Our wealth is spectacular as well, but our power is weak. And so it is on. The American Civil War. And I'm nervous because we don't have any freaking troops. But oh, don't do it. Don't do it. They could bring probably almost 3,000 troops down on Richmond, and I would have 500 mob. The mob is like armed citizenry or whatever. I think they're just considered militia in this game. Mob, armed citizenry, militia, whatever they go by. Their unit that you get three or four of them, for, especially for bigger cities, you'll get up to five or six. Just a couple hundred men in each regiment of them, and they break instantly. They are terrible, unless you know how to use them. Here's something about Robert E. Lee. You can read that if you want. I think it says about his dad is Henry Lightfoot Lee, something like that. Served with Washington in the American Revolution. The Lee family was pretty cool. Hopefully I didn't go too fast. Okay, second half of February, 1861. I don't care about that. We got some more Tennessee regiments. We've built a ton, but we are going to have to start building troops now. So let's... Get on with recruitment. 12 pound howitzer, cavalry, cavalry, volunteer line of tree. We'll get some zuaves. Pretty sure that's how you say it, zuaves. A lot of people say zuaves. I'm almost positive it's zuaves. I'm a big history Civil War buff, but I'm not saying I'm an expert by any means, just so you guys know. So this is the. Oh, come on, rename it for me. This is going to be the third Tennessee. Militia. And guys, I've never, like I said, I've played Empire Total War campaigns on vanilla. But this is very different. I mean, this is almost a completely different game. I don't really know what I'm doing. I know how to build things. I know basic strategies. But I don't know if what's different in this game compared to the regular vanilla non-modded game. And this is just two factions. 5th Tennessee... Cavalry. Gotta fix that. I said militia instead of cavalry over here. And we get a couple things of guns in here. We'll be sitting pretty. We can't recruit cannons. So New Orleans is gonna have to reinforce us if we even have any cash to spend, which we do. I'm not even bothering out the West. I'm just with these two main theaters. So. Confederate regular line infantry, cannons, and we can get plenty of cavalry up there, so that's all I'm going to build, we're going to move those troops up, oh, wrong thing, we're going to move those troops up, we'll take them two or three turns to reinforce Nashville, Georgia, we can recruit some good troops as well. I'm building so much military stuff, it's making me uncomfortable because I know the key to this game is if you don't have any money from your economy, your military troops will desert. So I know, no, know how important it is to not just focus on military, and I feel like that's what I'm doing, but at the same time, the Union is baller. They're going to wreck us. <clears throat> but yeah, guys, this video could go on. We it, Battles can go anywhere for 30 minutes, and then we have all the campaign stuff to do on the map because the battles are real time. I put one, an Empire Total War battle up, and I'm going to put, I believe I'll have put up at, I haven't put it up yet, but at the time of this recording. But when this goes up onto YouTube, I should have an American Civil War real time battle up, so you'll see what the battles are like if you've never seen them before. But, um, uh, real quick, let's just see what the Union's doing. I forgot. They got four units of. Militia. Wow, they've already produced a ton of troops. Look at the 16th Regiment of Foot, and I told you it's boring. <laughs> we got 2nd Tennessee Militia, 3rd, 4th Tennessee Cav, 5th Tennessee Cav. It makes it fun to make the names. You guys might think I'm a dork and tell me to stop, but I'm going to do it anyway. But yeah, I'll see you guys back for episode 2. We should be able to get into our first battle, build some decent armies, build up our economy more, and move on the Union. 
I would like to strike and take Kentucky while holding and maintaining Virginia, and just D.C. will be the last thing I hit is probably my plan. Cut the Union in half, take St. Louis, Detroit, Kentucky, and then push on the east while maintaining a defensive perimeter in the area of Richmond and the Carolinas.